When people think survival horror, usually the first game they think of is Resident Evil. But the truth is, there were a few to come before it. You could go as far back as 1992's Alone in the Dark, but we're going to talk about Clock Tower. The very first Clock Tower game released in 1995 for the Super Famicom, a year before the original Resident Evil. The game would only release in Japan and we would never see it in North America. As for the plot of the 1995 Clock Tower game, you play the role of an orphan named Jennifer. You and your friends who are also orphans have been adopted by a new family. Sounds like a nice warm story, but it turns ugly quickly, trust me. People start dying and it's up to you to figure out what's going on. The game takes a point and click approach, and I'm not really a fan of that, but that's okay, some people are. Throughout the game, you are stalked by the Scissor Man, a man that follows you with a giant pair of scissors ready to cut you up in a thousand pieces. You'll need to run and hide to get rid of him when he appears. So in 1997, we in North America finally get a Clock Tower game. It's actually the sequel to the 1995 game, but to us, it was the first game. The game was directly following something that we here in America never got. Now spoilers are coming up, so turn the video off if you don't want to hear them. The game takes place after the events of the 1995 game with Jennifer being the only survivor. And guess who reunites with her? The Scissor Man. He's even more terrifying now that he went from 16 bits to 32. It once again continues on with the point and click system and I just feel like this game could have been so much more if you had more control over your character. The voice acting isn't very good, but it's not nearly as bad as the original Resident Evil game. As I mentioned, the 1997 game picks up shortly after the Famicom game. Jennifer is receiving treatment now for those traumatic events by the Scissor Man. So three words sum up this game. Run, hide, and pray. You have no option to fight the Scissor Man one on one, and you must hide and pray he doesn't find you. Now every hiding spot doesn't work, especially if you use the same one continuously. I do have a small issue with the game, and it's the dialogue. There is way too much, and for some of the dialogue, they didn't even record voiceover. It hasn't aged well, but if you're wanting to be scared, it can definitely do that for you. Clock Tower would come to an end in late 2002 with Clock Tower 3, which didn't even have the Scissor Man in it. To me, that's the only thing that makes me think of the series. It's known for the Scissor Man. In 2016, a game by the name of Nightcry released for PC. It was a Kickstarter originally named Project Scissors, and it was made by many of the original team members who made Clock Tower. And crazy enough, the killer carries around a large pair of scissors. Even though it's not technically Clock Tower, this is the closest we'll probably get to a newer Clock Tower game at the moment. If you happen to see the 1997 PS1 Clock Tower game, I recommend it for hardcore survival horror fans. If that's not your thing, you'll probably hate it and say it's garbage. You're not into it. You'll say it, ate, it didn't age well, and it did not age well. But if you're a fan of this genre, I think you'll like it. Play the game and explore every bit of the screen. And don't go looking for the Scissor Man, because he'll find you. <laughs> 